So welcome all, and um, hopefully the quiz went well. Where our plan is to get to it and look at the quiz and see how to do it. So let me share my screen. All right, so let's look at the first question on the quiz, which says the following. A study was done to estimate the size of stellar jays' nests. A biologist measured 10 nests diameter in inches, and the data are shown. And we got a bunch of numbers. Find a 95% confidence interval for the study. Interpret the confidence interval. What does it mean in this situation to be 95% confident? Okay, so this is a um, standard confidence interval problem. Hopefully, you guys were able to handle it. Uh, just to let you know, it's really hard to be inside all the time. You know, you can't leave, but I'll tell you, there's this beautiful stellar jay that's making a nest right outside my window. So that's all I do is look at this nest. So if you don't like the question, blame the jay. <laughs> so um, we need to find a 95% confidence in order for the study. And I think the easiest way is to at, literally copy this list. So you don't have to type it again. And let's go into the calculator. Um, what number calculator should I be using here? What number calculator? Yeah, so this is number nine. We have data and we want a confidence interval for a mean. So I click on number nine. And I can just paste in the data. Okay, you don't have to type it all out. That's the good thing about doing it on a computer is copy and paste works really well. Any questions on what I did so far? Um, use the um, Excel sheet, is that okay? Excel will work, um, but here's the problem. On the exam, on the exam two, um, you're not allowed to use anything other than the one screen that has your quiz. So you want to practice, you want to practice with this so that when you get to the exam, you're not trying to re like learn some new technology you never tried before. Okay, the Excel will give you the same answer, but on the exam, you're not allowed to have Excel because your, um, your screen will be blocked except for the exam questions. Does that make sense? Okay, um, so that's just a note. That's a suggestion to make things better. Okay, and I try to make it easy. I mean, you do is copy and paste it in. What's the CL? What? Yeah, 0.95. So I have 95% confidence. And I just hit calculate. And it's the lower bound and the upper bound. We certainly don't need this many decimals, by the way. Um, I'm going to go one decimal, 11.5 to 15.1. Any questions at all on working this out? Okay, so 11.5 to 15.1. So that's part A. So let's put it in a bracket. Any questions on part A? Okay, now let's go to part B. Part B says, interpret the confidence interval. Okay, what are the first few words whenever I ask you to interpret the confidence interval or state the conclusion? Um, what should you always start with, the first couple words? Yeah, with 95% confidence. Okay, and by the way, it could be 90%. This particular example is 95%. With 95% confidence. And now, let's remember what we're looking at. What we're looking at is the diameter of Stellar J's nests. Okay. So, and this is quantitative, so it's a population mean. The population mean diameter 
of Stellar's Day's Ness. is between, and the units were inches, so it's 11.5 inches, and 15.1 inches. Any questions on part B? Okay, so my strong recommendation, by the way, is to practice, practice these. The quiz helps you because you get you know a little bit of practice, but make sure when you're doing the homework, write write it down. Don't just click you know whatever. There's a right answer, but write it down on a piece of paper or type it if you like typing, so that you're used to getting these written out. Because on the exam and also on the project, you have to write it out. Any questions on Part B? Okay, let's go to Part C which is what does it mean in this situation to be 95% confident? So now we're looking at 95%, that's a probability. And what does that probability of 0.95 represent? Okay, and these are somewhat standard too. Obviously, you know, we're gonna put words like Stellar's J's and stuff like that. But what we can say is that if many studies Actually, how about many samples of, and we can go over here and we can count, might even say there were 10 nests. So of 10 nests, were looked at, then each, would produce a different confidence interval. Okay, so if we look at these 10, but if we look at a different 10, then you'll get different numbers, and you'll have a different confidence interval from the different numbers that you could get with a different 10. And you could do that over and over and over and over again. And that we could say is that 95% of these confidence intervals will contain the true population mean diameter for Stellar's Day's Nest. Any questions? Any questions about problem one? Any questions? Okay, just to let you know, um, there's a lot of writing and expect it, okay? In fact, if you don't write a lot from now on, worry. That means you probably didn't do it right because this is all about interpretation from now on. But we're not really doing any math. Uh, we're dropping something in a calculator. What we're doing is we're interpreting the results. And that's pretty much how just about everything we're going to do for the rest of the course is going to be, is how do you interpret the results after you put it in the calculator? Okay, the calculator does all the math for you. Any questions at all on first problem? Okay, let's go to the second problem. Okay, a survey was conducted asking 745 Californians if they think that the beaches should all be open. 387 of them answered that they do think that the beaches should all be open. Okay, and you shouldn't be too surprised. I asked you to find a 95% confidence interval. And uh, then I said interpret confidence interval. Okay, so any questions on the question? Any questions on the question? Okay, so just to note, what's the survey question here?
Yeah, well, you, you, you got the second thing I was going to ask is what's the answer to the survey question? So now the survey question is, do you think beaches should all be open? Okay, yeah, there we go. And the answer to that is either yes, I do, or no, I don't. Any questions on that? Okay, so when the survey question is yes, no, take a look. That means we're going to treat this differently. So in our links to calculators, which one are we going to look at? What number? Okay, number eight is confidence interval for a mean. And notice this is a yes, no question. Yeah, 11 is about a proportion and proportions are results of yes, no questions. Means are results of quantitative question. Any questions on that? So this is a confidence interval for a proportion question. So let's go and pop in what we know. N was 745. The X was given as 387. And the confidence level was 0.95. Any questions on entering this? And hey, calculate. Okay, lower bound, upper bound, that's what matters. Okay, just a note, P hat, that's the sample proportion, 52%. The lower bound, I'm gonna go two decimals, 0.48, and the upper bound is 0.56. So notice question one was just, uh, sorry, uh, question part A in here was find the interval. So the interval was 0.48 to 0.56. That's part A. Any questions so far? Any questions? Okay, part B was interpret the 95% confidence interval. So let me ask you, what are the first few words? That'll get you going. What are the first few words when I ask you to interpret the confidence interval? Yeah, with 95% confidence. You don't know how many people get this wrong and confuse the confidence level with the confidence interval. But we're interpreting the confidence interval and that's with 95% confidence between, I'm gonna write as percents, 48% and 56% of, and now let's read the question again, so that we know what it's of and all that. Okay, they ask Californians if they think the beaches should be open. Okay, so of all Californians. There we go. Between 48% and 56% of all Californians think that the beaches should all be open. Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay, it's a very standard question, but you need to you know, learn how it works. Because uh, do you think you're going to be asked a question similar to this on the um, next, on the first, on the second exam? What do you think?
I don't see y'all jumping in. Okay, the, it, the answer is absolutely yes. It may not be about beaches, <laughs> but yeah, you're gonna have to do a confidence interval. You're gonna have to use your, the calculator to come up with a confidence interval. You're definitely gonna have to interpret the confidence interval, and you might have to interpret the confidence level. Okay, typically the way I test is um, I have you interpret the confidence interval on one of the questions, and if I have more than one confidence interval question, then the other one wouldn't have a level. So this is very typical, where here I didn't ask you to interpret the 95%. You should know how, but I didn't ask you so you don't need to. So here, how would you interpret the confidence level? Same idea. You would say that if, in this case, um, our sample size was 745. So if you took many samples of 745, or you survey many groups of 745 Californians, then each of those surveys would produce a different confidence interval. And 95% of them would contain the true population proportion of Californians to think the beaches should all be open. So it's very similar. Yeah, yeah. Interpret the confidence level is the same as what does it mean to be 95% confident? One of the things about this class, and it's hard for some people, is that it uses a lot of English. And there are many ways of saying the same thing in English. And that's one of the tough parts. But that's called the real world. There isn't only one way you'll ever see this when you leave this class, when you start reading reports and stuff like that. There's lots of ways of talking about it. And I want you to get used to the different ways of talking about it. Any questions? Okay, if you understand the concepts, then you'll be able to read the question and know how to answer it. And that's the most important thing. Any questions? Okay, so I want to go back to number one for an interesting reason, something you, I'm sure none of you thought about, but I'm going to talk about it. I didn't ask it on this. But if you look at number one, we have a study was done to estimate the size of Stellar J's nests. They measure 10 nests diameters in inches, and here's our stuff shown. So first thing, let me ask you, do we need to make any assumptions? when we find this confidence interval? Yeah, what's the assumption you have to make? What's the main, there's actually two, but what's the main one that you might spot right away? So you see that we do have to make an assumption, but what, what, what do you have to make? What do you have to say? Opening this up. Yeah, yeah. We notice that our sample size is 10. And that means that we need to assume that the distribution of the diameter size of Stellar Day's nest is normal. Okay. And honestly, I have no idea. I'm not a biologist. I do have a cute Stellar J nest like right outside my window, but I don't know about all Stellar J's nests and whether they follow normal distribution. Um, and my guess is the biologists don't know either. One thing, they're not statisticians. And the other thing is maybe no one's even checked. I don't know if anyone's ever studied that or not. Um, so that's just a pure assumption. Another assumption, what's the other assumption? And the hint is we talked about it in the first week of class. Yeah, yeah, we have to assume that we have an unbiased distribution that, you know, there, this was randomly sampled or at least scientifically um, sampled in terms of doing it. Okay, so I want to mention that because that's important. All right, so now comes a tougher question. If you do assume that the distribution truly is normal and you go and compute your confidence interval, can we use a normal distribution to do the calculations? What do you think? 
So if you assume the population distribution is normal, which means the central limit theorem does apply, so the sampling distribution is normal, and we use a normal distribution to get this confidence interval. Any guesses? You should all you should say yes or no. That's all. That's all I'm looking for. By the way, it's better to get it wrong than to not guess at all. <laughs> okay. So I'm getting mixed answers. Okay. So here's the problem. If we use a normal distribution, then the first thing you have to do based on the probability is we're going to have to, in our calculator, okay, you have to type in what the population standard deviation is, right, to be able to come up with the, um, the answer. Okay, that's part of the calculation. Remember, you, you, you know, you always looked at your, at your um, data, you put in sigma. And here's the issue, is we don't know the population standard deviation. And we'll never know, okay? Even biologists would never know. Because to get the population standard deviation, we would have to measure every stellar jay's nest that's ever been made. Okay, and that's not possible, by the way. There are millions and millions and millions of them. Um, no one's ever going to be able to do them, to do that. So you can't get the population standard deviation. It's just not possible. And that's true in just about every single case. Any questions on that? Okay, it turns out that in the old days, around, I think about 90 years ago, maybe 100 years ago, um, they used to just kind of not even think about it, and they used a pot. They thought of it as a population standard deviation, and they just said, "Well, we'll take the standard deviation of the sample, call that the population." And the problem is that what that does is it adds an extra piece of error. Does that make sense? Because we don't know the population standard deviation, and we're trying to use the sample standard deviation to approximate. Any questions on that? Okay, well, it turns out, yeah, so exactly. What kind of distribution are we assuming the data is when we don't use a standard deviation? So it turns out, we can actually think, um, believe it or not, beer. <laughs> okay, this was, this was actually figured out in a brewery. Okay, probably the last thing you would think of. But there was a guy, and he realized that he wasn't getting it right 95% of the time, which is what should happen, right? He was getting it right less than 95% of the time. And he also taught on the side, so he did both. He worked in a brewery, and he analyzed their data, and he taught statistics. And he realized that it didn't work. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to tell you the mathematics that you need to make it work. What I am going to do is tell you that you use an adjusted normal distribution. So it's not really a normal distribution. It has a different mathematical formula and equation, which is absolutely brutal. Um, we don't teach enough classes of all of our calculus classes for two full years of calculus for any student to understand it. You really have to get a master's in math at least to be able to understand it. And they use, yeah, something called the T distribution, okay? Which is, again, it is brutally complex. So the good news is that you don't have to know the math, but you do have to know that on your calculator, whether you're using the computer calculator or a T84, that when you don't know the standard deviation of the population, which is pretty much always, then you have to use the T distribution and not the normal distribution, which they often call Z distribution. Does that make sense? Okay, and it turns out that the T distribution doesn't look that much different. Okay, unless you know really know what you're looking for. It looks somewhat bell-shaped, but it's slightly different. And I think I'm not gonna get into all the differences, but you can do it. Maybe I will, I can pass it up. I made an app for it. You know, I'm a programmer. And 
let's get to our book. So you can kind of see that there's going to be a slight difference. that's this one. So there's a visualization we can do, and that's this one. So right here, it's interesting, the default is n equals 10. Okay, so in black is the normal distribution, in red is the t distribution. Do you see a difference? Okay, are they exactly the same or is there a little bit of difference? Okay, there's a little difference, not much. Um, on the other hand, if we did say did a sample size of six, you're going to see the difference increase. And then a sample size of four, it's a big difference. You shouldn't do a sample size of four anyway, it's too small to have any interest in stuff. If you do a sample size of 32, it's almost the same. Okay, but in two decimal places, which is neutral. So visually, you can hardly even tell that there's a difference. Okay, so I figured you could see the difference. So again, the black is the normal distribution, the red is the T distribution, and they're almost the same. Okay, the mathematical details are beyond this class. What matters is that you know that you use the T distribution whenever you're doing a confidence interval for a mean. If you don't know this population standard deviation, which is pretty much always. Okay, I have never, I've done lots of work in statistics. In my lifetime, I have never seen a situation when you know the population mean. I top sorry, population uh, standard deviation. It just doesn't happen. So T distribution is what always happens. Any questions on this? So is there a calculator that includes this T distribution? Sure. This one. <laughs> Uh, let's see, the one we just used. So notice it says sigma unknown right here. That means we use the D distribution. Yeah, um, and what you don't have to worry about is what I did to code it, because <laughs> that's messy. All you got to know is that if you don't know the standard deviation, you use the T distribution. Okay. And I will let you know there will never be a question on a quiz or a test or an exam when you will know the population standard deviation. Because I want to be realistic and realistically it just never happens. So it's always going to be T distribution if it is a um, quantitative. If it's a yes, no question, that's a whole different thing. Then we use the Z to approximate binomial and you just gotta make sure you have a big enough sample. Any questions on that? Okay, so hopefully you get the idea. Um, confidence intervals are really important. They come up a lot. And what I thought I'd do now is I am going to have you guys read an article and I'll even pop up the article for a moment, and then I want you to get together, talk about it, and then answer some questions. So let me just pop in the article. So this is the article, and I don't know if you've been watching the news. Uh, it's pretty important to, uh, to a lot of you. Well, I'm gonna put this in the um, chat box so you have the URL to it, because you're gonna need it. Okay, so um, make sure that you copy and paste this onto your um, browser and get a tab and, and look at this. And what this article says is two thirds of college students comfortable returning to campus for, small, for fall semester. Okay, by the way, do you think you're gonna return to campus for the fall semester or quarter, by the way, depending where you go, especially if you're transferring? All right, so you want to hear, by the way, don't get mad at me for being the bearer of bad news. The Cal State University system, that's all of them, just said that they're not opening. 
in the fall. The UCs just said so too. Um, the UC said maybe a few classes, that would be like heavy lab classes, but basically, no. Okay. <laughs> so just to let you know, yeah, don't get mad at me, um, but that's how it is. LTTC, I'm pretty sure we're not opening either. <laughs> okay, they, they've kind of said plan on not opening. So we're gonna be online probably too. So again, don't shoot the messenger on this one. Uh, maybe a miracle will happen, I don't know, and they'll have a cure and then they'll open, but I doubt it. Um, so right now they're announcing no. So this is the article. And what I want you to do is the following. Is the first question I have is a sample size large enough to use the normal distribution? The second question is come up with a 95% confidence interval based on this study. So we're looking for again the percentage of students that are comfortable returning to campus. Number three is use a complete sentence to state your conclusion. And number four is use a complete sentence to explain what it means to be 95% confident in this case. Are there any questions about what I'm asking? Okay, so again, uh, make sure you have that link, um, the URL copied in, because you're gonna have to go into it. Um, the good news is it does give you the sample size, it gives you all the information you need, okay? And what I'm going to do is have you now, let me stop my share. And I'm going to split you into two. And I want you to go and talk to each other. I want you to answer all of those questions that I ask about this article. Type it out or put it on paper, chat it, because then you're gonna re you we're gonna come back together and then get it. Larry, can you put the questions into the chat as well? And there's a stand of questions, by the way. Uh, let me get it.
Larry, I have a question. Okay, I'm about to uh, close breakouts, but it's not private to your breakout, right? Mm -hmm. It is? You don't want the other no, people No, it's to not. Hear? It's okay. okay. Um, we use 66% because oh, it's hertz. Okay, that would be 65%. Okay, so... Because that's just... what they actually... They said two-thirds, but what they got was not two-thirds. Yeah, that we were using 65, uh -huh. but then you said to read the title and use the title, then we 
Right. Well, one of the things with the title is you can say they got 66%, but 65%, 60, they got 65%, but 66% or 67%, because that's really two thirds, right? 66% two th is 60, two thirds of 67% rounded to the nearest percent, right? <laughs> yes. Um, so, so technically, what you can what you can say after doing the work is that two thirds is within the margin of error. So the title is not wrong. Do you see that? If the two thirds is not within the mar margin of error, then they shouldn't say two thirds, right? So they shouldn't say a half, for example, because 0.5 is not within the margin of error. It's not in the confidence interval, in other words. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. It'll adjust things slightly, you know, by a, a percent. <laughs> okay, you guys ready to present? Yes, sir. All right, let's hear uh, number one. You know your group. I told you which one you're doing. I'll go ahead and answer that. Okay. Uh, so you take the percentage of successes and multiply that by the total, and that's bigger than five, so yes. And, and what number did you get, by the way? Uh, well, we did 866, but since we're doing 65, let's do it. So you said it was 853 was the number, right? Or 835? I just sent you the... It was 835 was a sample size. Okay. And that's just written at the bottom. Michael, I just sent you the numbers. Thank you. So 542.75, and you would round up to 543. Good, good. And, and it, it's not just bigger than five. It's a lot bigger than five. Does that make sense? But what else do you have to compute? Here's the hint, you just computed NP. Any thoughts? You're all muted, by the way. Yeah, you need to compute NQ, right? And by the way, NQ is just going to be the um, sample size, which was 835. Right, and you multiply that by. 0.65. Mm -hmm. Or you could just, well, no, that's what you just did. That's how you got oh, NP. Got it, got it. But what you could to get NQ is you just take the eight, the, the 845, uh, uh, 35, sorry, and just subtract your um, NP that you got. Right? Because number okay. yeses versus number nos. Okay, got it. Yes. That's the easier way of doing it. And it's a better way of thinking about it. You want to make sure that the number of yeses and number of nos is more than five each. And is it more than five? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's hundreds, right? So there's no issue. There's no issue with using the normal distribution, right? The only possible assumption, and they didn't give us any information, is this whole thing with bias. And that one we can't tell from the article if there's bias or not. Does that make sense? Okay, how about number two? All right. Uh, yeah, so I was number two. And uh, for this problem, we just used the confidence interval for proportions calculator. Mm -hmm. And um, we put in the uh, trials, which was 835. Mm -hmm. And um, the number of successes was 543, mm -hmm. which is 835 times 0.65. And then it's asking for a C level. Mm -hmm. Or of nine of point nine five, so that's what I plugged in, and then the interval was between sixty two percent and sixty eight percent, or point six two and point six eight. Yeah, you could say it either way. Yeah, so point six two to point six eight is a proportion, and sixty two percent to sixty eight percent is a percent. So they're both right. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay, number three. That's the other group. So number three, you're on mute, by the way. Sorry about that. I thought it was not. With 95% confidence, the range of yes would be between 
uh, 0 0.6180 and 0.6826. Okay, the one criticism I have, and you want to get this right because you don't want to lose points on the desk, is that I want to see a reference that you're talking about the population. Does that make sense? Yeah, because you have to have the, if you took other random groups of 835. Uh, no, no, it's not about that. Oh. It's about the whole population of oh. all American students. Do you see? Okay. So you can say the population, so you could either say that between 62% and 68% of all American students are okay with going back to class. Or you could say the population proportion of American students who are okay with going back to class is between 0.62 and 0.68. Do you see that? But I wanna see those words that indicate that it's a population you're talking about because I want you to show that you understand it's a population and not the sample that this confidence interval gives. Does that make sense? Yes. And you know, jot that down because you don't wanna lose points on the next test. I have a question about that. Yeah. Um, can you just say like with 95% confidence um, between 62% and 68% of all college students feel comfortable going back to school in the fall? Is that all right? That's fine. As long as I want to hear that word, as long as you have the word all. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a reference to the population. Perfect. Yeah. So you should have a reference to the population. Otherwise, are you talking about the sample or the population? And if you have the word all, then that's great. Do you see okay. that? Yep. Okay. Any questions on that at all? Okay. How about um, the last question? Interpret right. the level. Uh, we said if we were to conduct this test many times with eight, a sample size of 835 students, then 95% of the confidence intervals would contain the population mean. It was great except the very last word. Uh, minus mean. Yeah, what the? It's, this isn't about a mean. What's it about? About the uh, proportion. Yeah. So it contained the population proportion, and then I would say of those uh, of college students who um, are okay going back to class. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but but I do take off points if it's a question about proportions and you use word mean or vice versa. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So there's some things that I'm um, uh, critical about. So one is sample versus population. So you always have to, you know, talk about is it sample or is it population you're talking about? And the other is, is it mean or proportion? And that's, that has to be emphasized. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So by the way, it's good that you're making the mistakes because if you don't make the mistakes now, then you might not even think about it and make the mistake l later when you get points taken off. So this is a time to make mistakes. Do you agree? Definitely. Yeah. So this is great because there's no points lost to make a mistake on these kind of exercises. Whereas the exam, that's where you don't want to make the mistake. And the project, by the way, too. So by the way, in your project, um, you're going to have to do a confidence interval. And I want to see that word population lots of times. Got it? So that's a big part of the project is you're going to be studying the population. You can use a sample to investigate the population. So that's just a note. It's a little early to completely talk about the project, but I can at least mention that. Any questions at all on this example? Okay, I liked it because I thought it was very relevant, especially since it just came out yesterday, uh, the bad news about the Cal States and, and UCs. Um, so. I figured we should look at it, see how do students feel about this? And it looks like most students, majority of students are fine. Okay, but that doesn't mean that that's what we're gonna do. All right, what I wanna do now is I wanna talk about the next piece. Let me share my screen. Okay, so we've talked about the student's t-distribution. We did our current event activity. Now it's time to talk about the sample size. So let me give you kind of an example. I think these are best looked at by example. So 
suppose you wanted to find out the population mean. And I, maybe I should say, instead of find out, because you never will, wanted to find a, and, and I'm going to make a, a funny number up for a reason. How about 88% confidence interval for the population mean um, loss of income. because of this crisis. Okay, that's something people talk about. And by the way, I don't know what the population mean is, but we wanna do that. Let's suppose if, oops, if you want a margin of error of no more than plus or minus, Um, how about $1,000? And if you know from a preliminary study that the um, standard de population standard deviation is around $12,000, how many people should you survey? Any questions on the question? Any questions? Okay, so this is very different than what we've been doing before. It's still about confidence intervals, but it's not find a confidence interval. This is a, you wanna do a plan about finding a confidence interval. And in your plan, what should your sample size be? Okay, so on your project, I told you what your sample size had to be. In the real world, is anyone ever gonna tell you? Any thoughts? Yeah, probably not. Okay, almost never. No one's gonna tell you what the sample size is. So you want a good sample size, and that's kind of tough. So in terms of getting a good sample size, what's the problem with getting a sample size that is larger than you need? And you know what the problem is with that? Yeah, time and money. Yeah, time and money, right? If you really only need a sample size of, let's say, 100, and you ask 50,000 people, you just blew it. Does that make sense? You wasted a year of your life, maybe $100,000 paying people to do it. Um, it'd be horrible. Do you agree? So if you sample too many people, then you've totally wasted your time. And that's a disaster, by the way. What if you, what if you don't survey enough? What's the problem? Yeah. So let's suppose that you know you need to get this out to the media. You're you're working for the news or something like that. You need to get it out to the media. You know, within three days, you do your survey over three days time, and then you realize you didn't survey enough people, and what what that might mean is you're going to end up with a confidence interval between negative, you know, 20,000 and 3 billion. And that's totally worthless, right? Not going to be able to put that in a headline of a news. So you need to dis you need to figure out how many people to survey. Is that clear on the goal? Okay, so the way it works in the real world is you first survey some and that'll give you a preliminary estimate for the standard deviation. 
okay? Because you can't know the population standard deviation. But you can get an estimate. You might survey 15 people just to get an idea. And you can use that as your idea. Okay, any questions on that? All right, so now what we need to do is we need to say, well, how do we answer this question? How many people should we survey? Now that has to do with the following. Let me write this down. I think this is an equation. Oops, not there. Let's try that again. So remember there was, an, there was a formula that said the following. We knew that sigma sub x bar, take a while to type this guy out, sub x bar, I'll just write bar, was equal to sigma over the square root of n. Okay, that was a key formula. Now, I don't know if you remember, but you can find the margin of error by taking sigma of x bar and multiplying it by our inverse normal piece. So let me explain what that means, is that if you have, let's picture, hopefully this will work this time. We had trouble last time. So if we have a normal distribution and we want an 88% confidence interval, is that clear? So what that means is that if we take the area between this piece and that piece, kind of the, the inside area, That's going to be 0.88. Any questions so far in the picture? All right. Well, if we know the inside area is 0.88, what is what is this? Um, actually, we don't even have to do it that way because with if you use my calculator, that's good enough. We need to find out this number the higher the low, okay? Actually, we do need. So we need one more piece, even with my calculator. We need to find out what that area is. So if the inside is 0.88, what is the outside? What's the left side? Yeah, good, good. So what you do is you say, if the inside is 0.88, then the total outside is gonna be one minus that, or 0.12, the left will be half of that which is 0 0.06. Any questions how I got that? Okay, so 0 0.06 is gonna be that. But what I wanna find out is what is Z? Okay, let's just do standard normal because it's easier. And standard normal member, that's a zero and one standard, de standard deviation of mean. So let's do Z. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so if I want to get Z, let's go pop into the calculator and it'll take me a moment to get there.
Okay, which calculator do I need? What number? Number four, not quite. Good try, though. Here's a hint. What was the distribution? What was the shape? Yeah, number seven. Number seven because we have a normal distribution. Okay. And what we want is we can say the low is negative a bunch of nines. The high is what we don't know. So for mean zero, standard deviation one, we're doing Z, so it's standard. And point zero six will be our area. Have I lost anyone yet? Okay, and I hate calculate. Okay, and I get negative 1.55477, et cetera. Let's just copy some of that. Maybe I'll do, I don't know. How about, uh, some decimals. Okay, so the first thing I can say is that Z equals, that, I'm gonna go four decimals because that's a little better. So negative 1.5548. Any questions on that so far? Okay, so that's our Z. Well, we know that if you multiply the sequence of XR by our Z, then that'll get you your standard error, okay? So let me show you how that works. So our standard error, I'm just gonna call that E for error, is gonna be equal to negative 1.5548 times, and that's going to be sigma over root n. Maybe I'll leave it as sigma for now, and then we'll plug in later. And in fact, I think I'm going to do the following. I'm going to call this z for now. Sigma over the square root of n. Any questions on that formula? Okay, so that's a standard error. And what, what's my goal, by the way? What do I want to find? What letter do I want? Yeah, I want N. I want N. E, I know. N is what I want, and that's the one I don't know. So basic algebra, and what I'll do is I'll do it in my head. Um, I don't expect you to do it in your head but I do expect you to have the formula written down somewhere eventually. And that is, and if you can do it in your head, that's great too. That's just the take calculus, which I just from one person. So we can say N is equal to the fraction. We're gonna have Z, times sigma over E, but I need, I wonder if it'll let me do this. Yeah, it does, good. squared. Let me take that and make it a lot bigger because that's the formula that we need. And that's always going to be the formula when you want the sample oops, when you want the sample size necessary to be able to have a margin of error that's not too big if you know the standard deviation. You thought it was PQ. Let's look at the question again. You want to find a confidence interval for, take a look, population mean loss of income. Is that clear? 
Okay, we'll get to PQ, but it's not there yet. Okay, that's a different question. Okay, that's number five, by the way. <laughs> this is a population mean question. Whereas with the PQ, it's a population proportion question. Do you see the difference? Very important, and it's actually the number one mistake people make on these kind of questions is, is getting the mean and proportion thing confused. But here, the question even has the word mean. And even if it didn't, it's clearly a quantitative study because it's how much money have, how much money are, have you lost? Do you see that? In income. And that's a number. So good question and important question because it comes up in a big way. All right, so now we just plug in. So I'm gonna, I think the easiest thing to do, I'm gonna copy and paste. I got my formula, Z I just calculated. And just to let you know, to save time, we don't need the negative sign. Why don't we need the negative sign? Yeah, you're squaring, negative sign is going to go away. So it's just easier in your life to not have a negative sign. Sigma was given, and in the problem it says the standard deviation was around 12,000. E was given, and again, it's a plus or minus, but also you don't need the plus or minus because we're squaring and the minus goes away. That's a thousand for E. Just want to make sure we don't lose the page. I think we lost it already. Got it. There, now I should stay on the same page. Okay. I'm going to let you do this in a calculator. What do you get? Just want to make sure you know how. I could do it kind of in my head. Three hundred and something. Let's see if you guys can pop in the calculator. I want to make sure you know how to do it. And see what you get. Okay, so notice what you got is 348.11. A one zero one one. That works. So should you ask 348.11 people? No, it doesn't make any sense, okay? You always round up. So a survey, 349 people. Any questions on this example? Any questions? I want to take this equation and I want to make it in red because it's an important one. It's one you want to put on your note sheet forever. Make it red. There we go. So that's a really important formula. Anytime you want to find the sample size needed, and it's a quantitative survey question, then that's how you find the sample size. Okay. And again, the hardest thing is to, know, to, to focus on the fact this is about a mean. The second hardest is that uh, 1.5548, that number there. Okay. That one took a little work, and you may need to draw a little picture and kind of see, and you have to use your calculator. You're not going to be able to do this in your head. There's no way. And by the way, on tests, I never give nice numbers where you have it memorized. It'll be like 0.88 or some other weird number. It won't be 95% because that one you might memorize is 1.96. Okay. If you don't have it memorized, that's fine. Any questions at all on that example? Okay. So, 
we just did the sample size for mean. Now let's do an example of a sample size for a proportion. Okay. So what I'm going to do is what we got, and I wrote it down in the article. Um, let's see. They had a margin of error of plus or minus 3%. Do you remember that? But what if you're not satisfied with a margin of error of plus or minus 3%? What if instead you wanted to redo the survey, kind of up it, and make sure your margin of error is no more than 1%? So let me write that out. Okay, suppose that you wanted to find out, find the um, populate, uh, find a, how about a, how about 94% confidence interval for the population proportion of all American college students who are okay with coming back to the class. In the fall. If you want a margin of error, of no more than 1%, and you know, and your best guess for the population proportion is 0.65, because that was the initial study, okay? That that's what they did. You're not satisfied with the margin of error, so you need to do a bigger study. Does that make sense? How many students must you survey? Any questions on that? Any questions? Okay, I'm not gonna go through the full mathematical proof of it, um, but I'm gonna give you the formula. So uh, it's very similar to what I did with uh, sample size when you're talking about a population mean, um, but now we have proportions. With proportions, we're not talking about sigma anymore. There is no sigma for a proportion. There's a P and a Q, okay? Where Q is one minus P. In fact, I think I'll write it as one minus P for a reason to be seen later. And here's the equation. It's n for the sample size is equal to p times q times z over e squared. Let's make that big and red. Oh, wait, I said I didn't want to do Q and I don't want it. One minus P. I actually have a reason for it. Any questions on this formula? Any questions on the formula? Okay, if there's no question on the formula, then we should be ready for it. So let's go through the letters and see if you can tell me what they what numbers you get for them. What is P? What's P in this case? 
Yeah, 0 0.65. It's given. Is everyone good with that? What's E? Yeah, so just to know, because a lot of people make mistakes on this, I gave you 1%. You need to think about that as like 1.0%, and then you got to move the decimal over to the left two places. And if you move the decimal over to the last two places, it, be, it becomes a 0 0.01. Any questions so far? All right, we need Z. I want to give you a minute or two, because again, if I just do it, then you may not learn so much. But given the fact that we want to find a 94% confidence interval, I want you to see if you can get Z. You're going to need a calculator. Okay, the computer calculator is fine. And it's going to take a little bit of work, not too much, but a little bit of work. And let's see if you can get Z, just like I got it when I had the 88%. And I got the Z of negative 1 point whatever, 5 something. Let's see if you can get the Z. And if it helps, again, 94% is our confidence interval, our confidence level. And I want to remind you the picture. So there's the picture. Okay, that was a picture when we had 88%, but things aren't changing that much. So I'm going to give you a minute or two. Let's see if you guys can do that. I do groups, but we don't have that, that much time. So let's see if you can, and you can put the chat box, you can ask any questions if you have them. But I want you to try yourselves. And if you're stuck, I'll be happy to answer questions that might help. And you can put in the chat box when you get the answer and see if we have at least two people, two of you that have the same answer. Good, good. Okay, negative 1.88. Oh, wait. Okay, any questions on how we got that? All, all of you got it, so I'm assuming it's good. Again, what you do is you say 94%, and one minus 94% is 6%, half of 6% is 3%. So 0 0.03 is gonna be our high, our low is gonna be negative 999. And our standard deviation is one, our mean is zero, and then you go for the calculate. And that gives you a negative 1.8808. And you don't need the negative because it's gonna, same as before, we're squaring. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put it in. So I'm going to copy and paste the formula. And let's pop in what we need to pop in. P is 0.65. 1 minus P is 1 minus 0.65. Z is negative. I'm going to drop the negative, though. 1.8808. And E is 0 0.01. Pop that in your calculator. Tell me what you get. Let's see if I have a couple people with the same answer. Give you a moment. That looks like they're off by a decimal place. They'd be normally really far away, but they're not. So maybe I'll pop it in. So 0 0.65 times 0 0.35, 18808. So 
up with the five times 0.35 times 1.8808 divided by 0 0.0.01 squared. Okay, so notice um, the decimal is after the seven, not before the seven. Does that make sense? And I trust Google. Google's pretty good with calculators. Okay, so, and then you always round up. No matter, this is the one time in the class where we don't use rules of rounding. We just round up, period. So it's 8,048. So survey, 8048 college students, 8048. Uh, we'll get there, I promise. In terms of when to use 0 0.25. So 80, let me get that number again. The last one. 8048. Any questions at all on how this worked? Any questions on what we got here? And I know you're, I know you're asking about the 0.25, but that's what I'm about to get into. <laughs> so that's next, I promise. Okay, but I wanna make sure you understand this first. Okay, any questions? All right, if there's no questions, let, let's get back into where we are. And let me do another question. Suppose you want to um, find a, I'll pick another interesting confidence level. How about a 92% confidence interval for the proportion? actually population, proportion of college students, actually let's go um, statistics students at CCCs, California Community College, if you know what that means. Uh, so you ask, was a preliminary was a preliminary estimate 0.65? The answer is yes, because we were told that was the article. Remember, so that was why we knew 0.65 was what we wanted to guess. Yeah, so that came from the article, and I purposely used the same question because we really did have an estimate. The next one we won't. For the proportion of statistics students at California Community Colleges who will um, be at a university next year. If you want a margin of error of no more than plus or minus, How about 2.5% uh, how many students do you need to, to survey? Let me write example. Is the question clear? Any questions on the question? Not the answer, but is the question clear? Okay, what's the difference? What's the main difference between this one and the one we just did? Okay, and I don't mean kind of the idea of it, but what's given. Yeah, here we don't have a preliminary estimate, okay? You probably have no idea what percentage of California Community College students 
that are currently taking statistics are going to be transferring and be at a university next year. Okay? If you have no idea, you have a P to plug in. So, we still can look at this formula, and this is going to be answering the questions you were going to, that you just had. And we say, well, we don't know P. So what we're going to do is we are going to think about, well, of all possible P's, what is going to make N the largest? And that'll be what's called a conservative estimate. So then we'll make sure we'll, we'll be, we know that we'll be good and have the margin of error no more than um, uh, 2.5% because that's what we want. We want to make sure our margin of error doesn't get big. So we're going to do a estimate for P that makes N as big as possible, and then we have a guarantee. Is that clear to everyone? Is that clear? Okay, now comes the hard question. What P makes this the biggest? And I'm going to um, do a little algebra, talk a little algebra, and we're going to think about this. And by the way, I, I don't like to mention names since we are on YouTube, but if you have to be taking calculus this year, by next year, you better understand what I'm about to say. <laughs> okay? If not, then as long as you remember the formula at the end or have it written down, that's good. And that is if you have n equals p times 1 minus p, times some number, okay, ZE is just something, it's P that we want to focus on, then you can rethink this, kind of make it feel more mathy, as Y equals some constant times X times 1 minus X. What is, what is the shape of the equation Y equals a constant times X times 1 minus X, in one word? comes from algebra. And it's not linear because it's x times 1 minus x, which is the same, by the way, as x minus x squared. And x minus x squared is not linear, right? What is the shape of x minus x squared times a constant? What is the shape of that? If you don't know, it starts with a p. Yeah, it's a parabola, okay? And it turns out, I'm not gonna prove this. Um, if I had more time, I could do it using algebra or calculus. And that is that the vertex of the parabola is the highest point. And that vertex ap appears when P is one half, okay? And if you wanna see the proof of that, take my calculus class, if, or, or Bruce's, because I think he'll be teaching an expert. Um, and then you'll learn all, all about that but P is one half, will make N the largest possible. Any questions on that idea? So if P is one half, then we're, to, then we're talking about a half times one minus a half. Well, what's a half times one minus a half? As a decimal, 0.25. So you're asking where does the 0.25 comes from? That's where it comes from. So what we can say, is now I can copy and paste the formula, but then know that we don't know P here. I'm also going to make it an X page. So when we don't have a preliminary estimate, you don't have P times one minus P, you have 0 0.25. And there's our formula, okay? When you don't have a P, you don't have no idea what the population proportion is, you didn't do a preliminary study, that's what you get, okay? And by the way, it'll be a bigger number than any P you plug in other than 0.25 from the original equation. I'm sorry, 0.5 from the original equation. So if you can get a preliminary estimate, you have less work to do, it takes less time and less money. So preliminary estimates are a good idea, but sometimes you don't, you don't have time for it, you can't do it. 
And on exams, sometimes I don't give you one, sometimes I do. Depends on my mood, I guess. I don't know. Okay, on the quiz, we'll see. So now what we can do is we can figure this out. So we have to plug in again. What's E? What's E in this case? And I purposely gave this one because a lot of people have trouble with this. Yeah, it's 0 0.025. It's not 0 0.25. It's 0 0.025 because you move the decimal over twice. And let's see if you can get Z. We, have a, we want a 92% confidence interval. And let's see if you can get Z. You did it before, so I'm hoping you can do it again. Again, it's a good exercise to do it by yourselves. I want to make sure two people have the same answer because I can't do it completely in my head. I know a 90% is 1.645. Good, good. Okay. And the negative, you can write it. You don't have to write it. It doesn't matter. You're squaring anyway. So 1.7507. Okay. For those who are watching this as a recorded video, by the way, um, practice okay and I'll, i'm happy to help you but make sure you know how to do this what we just did is you said that we have a 92 percent inside so that's eight percent outside half of that is four percent or 0 0.04 so that means that the low is negative 999 the high is unknown the mean is zero the standard deviation is one and the p is 0 0.04 and when you do that you get Point 1.7507. Oh, All right, so then what is that? You can put that in your calculator. So you can be able to hopefully put that in your calculator. That's 0.5, 1.7507. Divided by, doesn't show, 0 0.025 squared. And notice we get 1225.98, always round up, so 1226. So a survey, 1226. College students. Let's go CCC students, so California Community College students. Just a note, I won't test you on this, but in the real world, what do you think you would do? You're going to hire a team, you got to do this in a week or something, so you don't have time to do that many, but you get your money so you can pay people to do it. What do you think you're going to, what do you think your goal might be? Any guess? In the real world? Probably, well, you may not have time for a preliminary. Let's say, you know, this is what you've done. Okay, so let me tell you the real world, you'd probably ask for, you'd probably get a goal of 1,500. Anyone know why? This is real world, not math world. Any of you been a manager before? If you haven't been a manager, I'm gonna give you a good lesson in life because you might be a manager someday. And that is, there's always slackers. You got your staff of people and you never get everyone doing their job. It's kind of, that's called life. So you always say, well, let's go for 1500. That way, if somebody doesn't do the job, we'll be probably around what we want. Does that make sense? So that's the typical, that's the typical way of doing things. I want to let you know, um, one of my first jobs ever, it was my second job and my third job in my life. It was really weird. I was the person who made the phone calls and did surveys. Okay, so I would, I would actually conduct surveys on the phone. I would, I would call you up, not you because it was a long time ago, um, but I would call you up and I would do the survey and write it out and I would hand out the information to my boss. 
Okay, so I actually know this from like real world. Here's a tough question. How old do you think I was? So I did this for a job, real job. Okay, and okay, no one's gonna guess um, because you guys are too young. In the old days, children worked. I was 12. <laughs> Nowadays, I think the manager would get arrested hiring a 12 year old. Yeah, but in those days, life was different. So I actually had experience when I was 12. Obviously, I didn't know statistics, but I knew how to use the phone. Okay, and I would call people. So I've actually experienced this since I was a kid. Nothing to do with being good at math, by the way. This was what you call um, having family in the industry. Okay, so that's what kind of what the, my, my boss would do is they get, they'd make sure that they would shoot for more than they really needed. And, but you want to start with what you think you need, and then you shoot a little bit higher. Okay, and that's the real world, which is different than the math world. Any questions at all in this example? Any questions? Okay. And by the way, uh, my first job was delivering newspapers. My second job was reading books to kindergartners when I was, I think, very young. Okay. But my third job was statistics, believe it or not, when I was really young. Any questions at all on this example? All right, so I just want to note, because this is the hard part for most people, is when to use which formula. So the first thing is you are asked to find the sample size, okay? Which is different than asking to find the confidence interval, okay? This is how many people, so that's like how many do you need to survey? That's a typical way of asking that, okay? It won't always be exactly word for word for that, but similar idea. Any questions on that? Okay, if you're asked to find the sample size, then the next step, and this is not just in this example, but pretty much everything we do for the rest of the, um, just about the rest of the class, is decide on the survey question. Yeah. If the answers to the survey question are numbers, so that would be things like how much how much uh, income loss have you dealt with because of this whole coronavirus issue? Okay, that's a number as an answer. Then use. Oops. I'm making it so big, I'm going to run out of space. Okay, then use, and I'm going to copy and paste because there's no reason to retype this formula, which takes forever. This guy. Okay. Let me write this as three. So four, if the answers big again. Are yes, no. then see if you have a preliminary estimate for P. If so, then use the preliminary estimate formula. And that's this guy.
If not, then use the one without the preliminary estimate, the one with the 0.25 in it, which is the one we just did. Okay, and then note that find Z by taking one minus the C level, I'll just write CL, divided by two. So you subtract from one and then take half of it. And then use the normal distribution with low negative nine 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 nine. Whoops. Nine 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 nine. High blank. mean zero and standard deviation one. And I guess I should say and P is the one minus the confidence level as a decimal, by the way, divided by two. Any questions on the step-by-step -step process? Any questions? Let me go through this again, because it's that important. A lot of people have trouble. So when to use which formula? That's the hard part about this whole thing, is first you gotta, if you're asked about the sample size, how many do you need to survey? Then decide on the survey question. If the, sur if the answers are numbers, then n equals z sigma over e quantity squared. If it's a yes, no question, then decide whether you have a preliminary estimate. If you have a preliminary estimate, then it's n equals p, one minus p, z over e squared. If not, then it's n equals 0 0.25, z over e quantity squared. And you find the z in any of these cases, by subtracting the confidence level from one and then divide by two, and then you go nine, 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 negative nine, 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 leave the high blank, the mean is zero, standard deviation is one, and your p value, the p number is the one minus CL over two, and then hit go for it. Any questions at all on this whole process? Any questions? Okay, I think I'm going to stop the video.